Hey guys, how's it going? My name is William Zambrano. Uh, I'm coming to you guys from the Cisco Networkers Meetup Group in New York City. Um, and actually, I wanted to do a re-recording of a past uh, of a past uh, video that I made a little a few months ago, back in September. Um, as you guys know, the video didn't exactly come out perfect. The resolution was kind of crappy. Uh, I was trying to get that 1080p HD resolution, and it kind of by the time I realized it, it was too late. The video was deleted, so um, I finally got around to re-recording the video for you guys. Um, so anyhow, uh, a little about myself in case you uh, guys are watching this for the first time. Um, it's a little mugshot of me. My name is Will Zambrano. I've been doing IT for about eight years. Uh, it's all I know. It's all I've been doing since I was like 19. Um, I've worked and consulted various different companies. Uh, I'm also CCSI. I do teaching as well. Uh, I have a bunch of certs as well. And um, I wanted to show you actually um, a quick peek at our meetup group page in case you guys actually haven't uh, seen it yet. Um, this is our meetup page. If you guys go to meetup.com and type in Cisco Networkers, you'll see it pop up um, or look at the bottom of the link of the video. You'll see a link for it there. And um, hopefully if you guys have seen this video in time, you'll uh, if, you guys, if this date hasn't passed yet, uh, January 14th, we actually have two guest speakers coming in, Keith Barker and Anthony Sequeira. Uh, are going to be doing a uh, webinar meetup talk for us on CCIE version 5. So that's going to be pretty good. Uh, also, we have... Uh, a couple of CCNA and CCMP study groups and webinars coming up. So that's going to be nice as well. So for guys who are looking to actually get that, um, we're putting up those face-to-face -face and webinar meetups together as well. And uh, also just recently rolled out is the uh, meetup page. Um, so right now this is going to be, as you can see here, um, probably months from now this will be a little bit different, but um, nycnetworkers.com. This is going to be a place that all the docs, the PowerPoint docs, you know, documents, uh, YouTube directories are going to be here. There's links to the YouTube channel, uh, links to the meetup page over here as well. So uh, definitely check it out. Um, check those out as well. And of course, here's my contact information down here, uh, willzambrano at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up on Skype as well. That's my uh, my Skype handling right there. Okay. Um, so let me just dive right into it. Uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be a two-part video. Um, first part is going to be how to do it. You actually study. For the two-part exam, um, there's going to be two parts. is introduction to um, data. Actually, just got a slide here for that. Um, introduction to data center network uh, networking, which uh, the first exam here. This is almost. If you guys look at the book, it's almost like CCNA all over again. CCNA writing and switching. Um, but the main meat is going to be in this second uh, exam. Uh, in my opinion, they should have just made one exam. This is like I don't know. I guess you could say Cisco's way to get an extra 250 bucks idea. But this will be the um, <clears throat> the main exam for CCNA Data Center. This is a at least where when I took it, um, this is where I ran into the not issues, but where I had to really actually sit down and and, and read the material. So, <clears throat> so let me dive right into it. So how do I study all this stuff in the first place? Now, I would say out there in, in on the internet, there's about I would say eighty percent free materials out there and about twenty percent paid materials out there. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there um, that you guys can play with for free. Um, granted, you know the Nexus platform. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of, of stuff that you guys can't actually test out for the fact that the equipment's like 20, 50 grand minimum. Um, so, and, and as of right now, GNS3 can can't do it. Um, <clears throat> so we kind of have to rely on stuff that Cisco provides us. Or if you're lucky enough to actually work for a shop that has uh, Nexus already, you can actually play with it. Um, but one thing that I, I want to show you guys was Cisco Cloud Labs. Um, here's a link right over here right now. Um, it looks like this. The site was always constantly changing, so they're always adding, removing uh, labs here. So you can just take a look at here. These are free labs, uh, free to sign up. The only thing you have to do is go to this thread here, um, learningnetwork.com, thread 5053, and you have to email uh, Robert Burns. He's one of the uh, CCIE data center guys. And uh, he'll hook you up to the uh, Cloud Labs. <clears throat> Another free uh, resource that you guys can use to, um, to study uh, Nexus and UCS is the UCS emulator. Um, so <clears throat> this is something that's it's a free download off of uh, Cisco.com. You can run it off VMware uh, Workstation or VM Player. I personally have it running off of uh, VM Workstation. And um, it's pretty nice. I mean, the first time you load it up, you get a page very similar to this. And on the right here, you can, uh, before you even launch the application, you could go ahead and, and add blades, you can change the memory, you can, uh, almost as if you're ordering 
Um, it's almost like you're going into the um, into like a you're calling Cisco and, and you're just buying the actual blade chassis and the fabric interconnects. You can set up what you actually want to see on on this side. So once you're done, you just hit the launch. You share the you launch the UCS manager over here, and you get a page that looks really similar to this. Um, now I'm assuming that you know you guys are, have left everything at defaults. Um, but it's pretty nice. I mean, this is exactly what you would normally see on a real um, UCS manager. I'm not going to go into the minor details here because that's outside the scope of the video. But um, you could pretty much do everything here that you will want to do um, on, a, on a real UCS production environment, except you can't spin up VMs. But you could do the service profiles. Um, you could play with, uh, make different uh, pools um, like VHBAs, you know, IP pools, Mac pools. You can do all that kind of stuff here um, just for proof of concept and even just for getting familiar with what you're looking at in the first place. So that's a, it's a pretty nice, nice resource right there. Books. So uh, one thing, of course, um, just like anything else out in the IT industry, there's plenty and tons of reading material and books out there for you guys to take a look at. Um, a couple highlights that I would recommend if you guys are going down this route. Uh, even And this stuff, these books here, um, I wanted to point out also that uh, Cisco Press has not released any books for CCNA or CCMP data center tracks. So the books here are more reference materials. <clears throat> they're, um, they're, they're pretty beefy. I mean, they're not meant for someone um, looking to pass an exam. They're going to give you the, 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 full, the full scope in, in one shot kind of deal. So <clears throat> you, know, you, may, uh, you may want to use these as references in the first place and then kind of work your way up. But first off, I, wanna, I would definitely recommend is uh, NXOS and Nexus Switching. Uh, make sure you get the second edition. <clears throat> the first edition is like four or five hundred pages, and this book is like seven or eight hundred pages. So it's double the material. So mm. obviously newer, later, latest, and greatest. Uh, so I would definitely go down that route. Um, <clears throat> next book is uh, Data Center Virtualization Fundamentals. Um, this actually gives you the the full picture of what of the, mm. of the Cisco uh, data center. So. Um, in there, they throw Nexus, they have UCS, they have uh, storage, they have VMware. Um, everything's kind of thrown into one big book. And this book's actually pretty beefy as well. I think it's like a, like a thousand page book uh, for this. Um, also, if you guys are looking for some kind of Cisco Press book, um, there is a third party book from Todd Lamley and John Schwartz. Um, they, at, at the time of the recording, there was only one book out. This was released, I think, like in late summer of, of you know, 2013. Mm -hmm. Um, this is the first exam, 64911. 1, 1. Uh, I think the second exam is 64916, I want to say. Um, so both of these books are out as of now. Uh, and I believe they also have a, uh, a simulator for Nexus in there as well. So you can actually, um, if you guys don't have access to the command line, you could actually play uh, with it as well. So actually, let me double check that. Uh, Okay, and actually, um, one of these sites here are showing us that uh, Todd Lanley printed the CCNA Data Center Study Guide, and on here there is a download the Nexus OS simulator from LanleySim.com. So apparently you are able to uh, to get this here. I haven't bought the book yet, so I can't say for sure, but um, looks like that's a resource that is available. Uh, a couple of books here as well. The Cisco Unified Computing System book. Uh, this book here is more like a hardware book. Um, doesn't really go into details of configuration, but it gives you the hardware. It, it gets down to the hardware. So it talks about the CPUs, the RAM, power supplies, the chassis. Um, they talk more about the, as I mentioned, the hardware level uh, versus the configuration. So um, <clears throat> if you're completely new to Nexus, or even if you are new to Nexus, uh, it's a good read to take a look at, just to know, you know, a little bit more under the hood of how things work. Also, for the SAN guys out there, there is a book there for storage network fundamentals. Uh, I believe this book is shorter. I think it's like a few hundred pages. Um, but either way, I mean, I, I can see the way what Cisco is doing and even <clears throat> the IT industry as a whole. Everything's going, I guess, you could, from what Cisco says, everything's going data center version 3, where version 1 was the mainframe and the dumb terminals. Uh, version 2 was your servers, um, your high power servers and your desktop computers. And kind of everything's now going back to what 1 was originally. But almost like everything's going back into the cloud. And they don't call it mainframes anymore. They just call it cloud. It's just, you know, 
it's almost the same concept, but just a, a different term. So, you know, it doesn't sound like we're going backwards, I guess. <laughs> so um, I, I could definitely see, even though if you're not sand guy today, and if you're networking or if you're looking to aspire and get into networking in the first place, VMware and SANS are two good secondary skills to learn because, I mean, they could be a network, great, but without VMs and SANS to actually store the disks and file shares and whatnot, the network doesn't really help us too much or it doesn't help a company too much. So it's good to get that that fundamental, as the book says. Um, so it, it's definitely a, a good read to, to look, take a look at in the first place. Also, Network Warrior. Uh, I don't know any... Most network engineers know about this book. It's Network Warrior. It's basically a book about um, uh, a guy who has, like I think, like 10 or 20 years of experience and writes down... Um, it's almost like a diary of stuff that he's encountered in the field. So it's a good way to get some real-world exposure without having actually worked in the real world. But if you guys take a look at the second edition, uh, I think it's like chapter 16 or 18. Uh, there's a Nexus chapter um, there, and he actually goes into plain English terms of uh, what he's seen in Nexus... Uh, the different um, models that he's run into, different issues. So it's, it's definitely a good read uh, to pick that up as well. Free video training. Uh, there's also some free video training out there available. Um, one of the biggest ones that I that not many people have heard of, I know when I first originally did this webinar way back in the, in the late summer, um, a lot of guys were blown up by the chat window because they, they never heard about this before. But... Uh, most of us kind of skip this part. Um, I know they always say time and time and again, go to the Cisco Learning site and you know take a look at the CCNA blueprint and resources and whatnot. And I mean, I'll be honest, I I didn't even come look at this in the first place. So I was like, yeah, 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 I know that kind of stuff already. But um, one thing that I did find out when I actually took, did take a look at this was if you go under the first exam um, and go under data set of training videos, there's a bunch of free video training and, and this is great because this is almost kind of like our CBTs that we're so used to watching like our training videos that we're so used to watching um, these are these were original webinars uh, way back in the summer when, when uh, Robert Burns and all the other guys were putting together a bunch of uh, training videos and I mean they're pretty good I mean they, they go into real detail uh, into it so this is I mean someone looking to do CCNA data center in the first place this would be the number one spot what I would take a look at uh, I mean, the books are great, but unless you kind of have the big picture, it's kind of hard to read the book because then it goes into real detail and you're kind of wondering, or at least I was wondering because I'm a kind of a, I like to think big picture. So, um, you know, what's the purpose of a VPC? What's the big picture? What is this, what is this probably, what is this issue going to solve or this protocol go to solve for me in the long run? What, what business need is this going to solve for my company? Um, so this is nice over here to take a look at that stuff and it's free on top of that. Um, of course, there are some paid uh, video training, which is train signal slash plural site um, videos. You also have your CBT nuggets, which uh, Anthony Sequeira just recently released CCNA videos. Um, I think they will also be going to be coming out with CCMP videos pretty soon, if not have already. And of course, INE, which has come out for INE more caters to um, CCIE level training. But regardless, I mean, if you're looking for some type of training, even if you're looking at the CCIE level, don't let that scare you. Um, I, at least I know when I first got into the industry, I thought, wow, CCIE level, that must be really hard. It, it's not hard. <laughs> um, nothing's ever hard. You know, I mean, if I, I always use the analogy of if, you know, you were trained as a really young person, let's say 14, 15, to be an engineer, you'll be a whiz in a couple of years with the right training or with the right mentorship. So dive into the CCIE level, even though, let's say you're NA or MP, don't make a difference. Just dive right into the IE material um, to get that to get that knowledge. Even if you don't get the certification, because I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, you want that skill set. You don't necessarily need a piece of paper telling you that. And of course, YouTube. YouTube. I, I love YouTube. It's great resources. Uh, here are a couple of videos that I did find um, online. But I mean, just type in any technology that you want, and uh -huh. chances are someone's made a video about it. Kind of like the video video you're watching right now. <laughs> so. Um, I just typed in one of the videos here. There's um, somebody from Train Signal here demonstrating the 5108 blade chassis. This is one of the half width blades, the B200. Uh, this is the first generation M1, so they probably, I don't think they sell these anymore, but um, I think M2 and M3 are, are out. But he goes through the, the, the hardware of the blade, 
Um, shows you how to actually install the blade. You can see on the top here, this is your two fabric interconnects, uh, which you need. The fabric interconnects are the brains of the chassis. So uh, when you buy one, you can't have to buy the other. It's like peanut butter and jelly. You, you can't, well, I mean, peanut butter and jelly, you can, but it maybe not a good analogy, but, <laughs> uh, but basically you need the two in order for the full, the full thing to work together. So, and it's pretty good. I mean, you could take a look at these videos. Um, just for the just for the hell of it, I just went ahead and typed in Nexus VPC configuration. Um, first one is actually a video from I Need Directly this Themselves, year. and this is a pretty good long video. I mean, this is almost an hour long video of I Need going over the VPC configuration. And if you guys have done any kind of uh, I Need training before, they go really, really, really detailed. Um, so uh, you may want to start with another training video um, or book if you haven't seen it before, but they're really, really good. They go pretty detailed. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I didn't even show you guys on the right here. I mean, there's tons of other related links here on Nexus Training. So um, you can spend easily hours, days, weeks on the, uh, the free videos that are available on YouTube. Uh, Cisco Titanium, there's a link uh, here that I want to post up for you guys. Uh, there's actually a thread in the Cisco Learning Network uh, about the emulator NXOS Titanium. Now, it's supposed to be a internal only emulator for Cisco guys. Um, supposedly it was leaked, uh, but I can easily tell you guys that it, unless you guys are really, really curious, I would kind of stay away from it uh, only because it's really, really buggy. Um, not all the NXOS features work on it. So, I mean, it's good, it's good if you can't get access to the Cloud Labs. Um, just some basic commands here and there, but I mean, it won't give you the full. Um, won't give you the full picture, so I don't want to say you're wasting your time with it. If you get it working, you know, feel free to drop me a line in the comments or shoot me an email. But um, from what I play with it, it's it's still not ready. Um, it's still pretty buggy. Uh, of course, if you want to go down the, the traditional classroom route, there are official uh, CCNA and CCMP data center courses. Um, the two here I did mention, and uh, Todd Lamley also has created a course as well. Uh, Lamley.com, and you can go to his CCNA bootcamp. Um, so that is another resource uh, as well for you guys. Uh, and of course, if all else fails, you could always go to the official Cisco website. Um, there's plenty of plenty plenty of documentation on on their website. Uh, of course, being that Nexus has only been out for like four or five years, uh, came out in 08, 09, I believe. Um, I think even early, it was like late 07, it came out. Um, so it's pretty new. It's only been out for about four or five years. Um, one of the reasons why Nexus and I, I, I don't know if you guys are you guys who are watching this are in the New York City area, but um, I've noticed a lot of recruiters and HR people are asking for the Nexus skill set um, just because it, it, it's gaining market share and there's not many people who know it. Um, so if you guys are looking to do something uh, studying for the exam and you guys have more questions about it, uh, definitely hit up the Cisco site. You can go take a look at their configuration guides, and they kind of hand walk you through a lot of the configurations, uh, like OTV, Quick Start configuration, configuring Fabric Path, um, detailed configuration of Fabric Path. What's a VDC configuration? So you download the complete book. I mean, they're kind of long, granted, you know, but you can skim through them. And this is where the you get the the fine to. I mean, this is. The manual of how to configure uh, OTV itself. Of course, you know you want to make sure that you got the right version. They go into explanation of what it is. So there's plenty of resources out there for free on Cisco's website itself. Uh, finally, I also want to mention Cisco Live 365. Uh, Cisco Live 365 is actually a um, is actually a resource um, that or I mean a resource. It's a conference that Cisco puts out a few times a year throughout the world. Uh, as you can see here, they have a couple locations. Um, and it's almost like a trade show. They have uh, engineers um, who go out and, and talk about new technologies. They have troubleshooting sessions. Uh, more importantly, if you go, you know, you want to do networking, but, um, you know, there are good, uh, good training seminars there for free. Uh, but one of the good things is, is that even if you don't go, um, you can actually go to their Cisco Live website and create an account, log in, and you can watch the videos. There's video recordings of these sessions, and you can go here. They actually renamed it Cisco Live. They got rid of the 365. So 
I guess between the original recording and today, they uh, they renamed it. But you can type in anything, and this is this, this doesn't just apply to Cisco uh, Nexus. This also can apply to anything else. So you're talking about writing and switching. You're talking about wireless. You're talking about phones, VoIP. Pop it in here, and chances are you're gonna find some kind of training on there. So if you want to put, um, let's say Nexus uh, OTV, um, you can also filter by what event. You can filter by the technology. So let's say I only want to see data center management, and I want to see what happened in Orlando. Um, right here, case studies. So there's a case study of Interfabric uh, DCIs or data center interconnects. So you can hit this guy, and there's actually a PDF here, and there's also a video here as well. So um, sometimes they don't have videos, but for the most part, they do have videos. And as you can kind of see from the little counter at the bottom, these are pretty long videos too. We're not talking about you know, like 20 minute videos. Uh, these sessions generally go from an hour to two hours or more, depending on what the session is, but they get pretty detailed. And also, if you have um, if you have a certain Firefox plugin, you could actually download the videos. Uh, what I personally do is that I actually play like a time and a half or two times fast. Uh, you know, this way you can go ahead and put on your iPad or iPhone or, or Android or whatever, and you could view it on, on the train or something. Um, and finally, get a mentor. Um, you know, you, one of the reasons that we actually, or uh, me and a couple guys, he actually created the meetup group in the first place uh, was to actually do some human networking to, to, you know, meet up different people in the industry um, and just learn from each other, basically. Um, it's one of the, the best ways to date, I think. <laughs> Uh, minus the books, minus the trains, videos, minus the classrooms. Is to you know network with somebody or get a mentor who has actually done this in the, in the first place. Um, coworkers, you know, you want to avoid burning bridges, of course. You know, get on LinkedIn, try and network that way. Um, but I would say the all the mentors I found um, inside and outside the IT industry have always been outside of work. Um, you know, when you're at work, you're there to work. You know, you're not there to network. You're not there to make. I mean, yeah, you maybe sometimes make friends, but, <laughs> um, you know, your employer is there to pay you to do a job. You know, they're not there to kind of, it's not your hobby. You know, they, they, they don't really care to, you know, indulge you in, in or to cater to whatever you're looking for necessarily, you know. Um, so it may be hard to network at work. Uh, that's why I always mention, you know what, get your name out there. You know, go to trade shows, join meetup groups, you know, write up blogs, make, you know, do something, get your name out there so you get recognition uh, or at least get some exposure so you can put yourself in the right position to meet the right people. Um, generally, also for the most part, too, from what I've seen, uh, the mentors I've had um, usually own businesses, but uh, they actually love what they do. Like it, it just the passion just oozes out of them. You know, they actually care about what they're doing and they take the time to really know what they're um, really know what, what what they're doing to the point of like they're an expert. Like you walk into an interview room and they blow that interview out the water. Um, they're not nine to fivers, you know, they don't stop at five o'clock. They go into deep into the evenings, like one, two in the morning, just studying, reading. Um, and those are the kind of guys you want to look for. Those are the guys that will probably be your mentor. Um, but yeah, I mean, like normally like, you know, you don't have to pull teeth to find a mentor. Generally they'll, it, it's almost like if the student is ready, the teacher will appear kind of thing. Um, you know, if, if you're hungry, if you're wanting to learn, um, and a mentor who is dying to share his information, you guys will just click. So, anyhow, enough of that. <laughs> but that's it for me, guys. That's my um, quick. I was hoping this video would be 20 minutes, but this is four minutes now. But uh, hopefully, the resolution will come out better for this one so you guys can see the slides better. Um, but I'm still going to keep the old video, uh, the original recording, because I, when I did that video a few months back, all of the information was fresh in my mind. So, uh, use these two videos and you know, cross reference or. Um, make sure that everything I said in the last video matches up with this one. And, you know, I, I probably left some things out too as well. But um, any questions you guys have, um, my content information is down here. I check my email religiously. It's on my Android phone. So, um, you know, you usually get a response from me pretty quick. Uh, or you can hit me up on my Skype panel name right here. Uh, also, as I mentioned before, as I demoed out to you guys earlier, uh, check up our meetup page and our uh, website for the latest information, latest meetups that are coming up. Um, also our YouTube page. Uh, we actually set a playlist on, um, I went ahead and set a playlist on the YouTube page. So I segmented them into NA, media, uh, NA videos, MP videos, um, 
and a little bit of Windows and VMware and whatnot or anything else I find uh, <laughs> I found out there in the industry. So um, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. Any comments, you know, email me or write down below in the chat, and uh, I'll be coming out in probably in a couple weeks with the part two of this series, which is going to be the actual configuration. Uh, so we're going to dive into the VPC, OTV, and uh, Fabric Path configuration. All right, guys, I'll see you later.